Today we have the morning show talking about childhood obesity. And we're here to talk with Grace Denman and Lindsay Hatfield, both registered dietitians, to talk about this subject, childhood obesity, which uh, I read, Grace, that one in five children in the U.S. are affected by this. That's a staggering number, isn't it? It is, and it's a number that has grown slowly over the years, um, and so it's just, that's why they then introduced this month where it's the Childhood Obesity Awareness Month to just make people aware that this is happening and that it is increasing over the years, and if you're a parent or a child, to just be aware and kind of taking action. As you look at that, Lindsay, uh, some reasons why the numbers, I think they've kind of tapered off a little bit, haven't they, over the last few years, numbers in terms of childhood obesity? I think that because there is this awareness and this focus on trying to be proactive with healthy habits, both in the family and just in kids themselves too, I think that really helps at least balance this out and um take a little bit more action as to what we can do to either prevent it, help treat it. Um, and that is probably why we're seeing those numbers kind of plateau a little bit more. But it's so hard, isn't it? I mean, you know, you have family functions and right. fun, fun things and candy and cake. and the Kids are always so busy, it seems like. A lot of times um, eating on the go is a big struggle or contributor to childhood obesity because they're going from extracurriculars to sports to school events to, like you said, family functions. And sometimes it's hard to pay attention to what we are eating or um, how much we are consuming to, which can lead to, you know, the more we start to do that, the more we lose focus of our health. Um, so it is harder for kids, but I think educating them and as parents showing by example can really help promote that um, healthier future for them. Yeah, kids, uh, I guess it's a good trait to learn early, right? To carry that on to later in life then, Grace. It is. So having parents model that and prioritize it with their kids, giving them time to play, ha letting them get that physical activity in, um, and then also just having that healthy food available to them. There are studies that show that kids who have family dinners are actually at less risk of having a heavier weight. Um, and I really think that I attribute that to that they're watching their parents eat, they're watching their having their parents eat vegetables and whole grains and they're being introduced to that early on and then they'll take that as they head off as they grow up too that's a good point so if you're you're telling your kids eat those vegetables and then you're sitting there eating a bag of doritos it's probably not a, a good thing is it no, and kids are watching. Even at early ages, they are watching and seeing what their parents are choosing and how their parents are acting, and they're going to learn from that. I know one of my favorite stories from our, our daycare is my wife always tries to fix some healthy meals, and she's had several parents come back over the years. How come? What, what, is, what is this about kale? What is this about kale? You know, <laughs> the kids are asking for kale when they go home. Right, and I'm sure because your wife is modeling that good behavior and having them try different foods. The other big thing is that we can't give up on our children when we introduce new foods. It takes them about 10 times to actually even know if they like the food. So we got to keep introducing it to those young children to see if they can catch on and like that food versus giving it to them once and giving up. I know that my mom used to pull her hair out trying to get me to eat vegetables and things like that. And it's interesting because I didn't think I liked it, but as an adult, I realized I do. And that, that probably is pretty common, isn't it? Right. I, I feel like the more parents involve their kids also in the cooking process and finding different ways to try new foods too, um, whether it's cooked vegetables versus raw vegetables or it's hidden in a casserole or on a homemade pizza or something like that, that can really um, figure out what you do like and versus what you don't like. Um, and then even experimenting that as you grow older too. And now you have to cook for yourself. You don't have mm -hmm. your parents doing this for you. So um, 
I feel like that's become a huge trend also is you see all these different recipes online, videos of others cooking or trying different things where kale was that big trend and people were putting in smoothies or salads. So just kind of being aware of also what's out there and maybe how others are utilizing these different foods that you might not have tried before. You can disguise it uh, in the form of even, you mentioned pizza, like a cauliflower crust or something, you know, or the kids might like it. Exactly, yeah. Yes, you know, sometimes that's a good alternative if you're looking for um, a healthier version or if you want to switch it up from eating your regular pizza, lots of different forms of sneaking vegetables in there. What about recommendations for the diet? Uh, you know, how much, how many vegetables should we eat uh, on our plate there and, you know, for our kids too? Yeah, so for produce in general, fruits and vegetables combined, we want to aim for about four to five servings a day, um, whether that's two cups of your leafy green vegetables, half a cup of your fruit juice, um, whole fruits and veggies are going to provide us the most nutrients versus like in juice form, dried form, things like that. Um, but, or if we're looking at our plates and we want to try to cover at least half of our plates, mainly with those vegetables and also adding some fruit in there too. And then the other quarter being your good protein and then another quarter, um, some starch or grains. I think we can all look back and say, whoops, we didn't eat enough of that yesterday or whatever the case might be. You know, I mean, I think, you know, you, you, you try, but sometimes it's hard, isn't it? For sure. There's always going to be those hiccups, like you said, prior family events, celebrations, holidays. Sometimes you're just stressed or craving something that you don't normally eat or that you um, sometimes view as not your typical healthy diet or meal. However, that's totally okay. Getting back on track, keeping up with your consistency, eating um, mostly a healthy balanced diet is really going to help you in the long run versus stressing out about, you know, the times you do have pizza or eat a little bit too much um, spaghetti or something like that. So, it's all about this kind of balance between your lifestyle, what's going on, quality of life, and then what you do mostly on a daily basis, weekly basis. For, for children, Grace, uh, that you want them to be active. So you want to encourage some activities too, don't you? We do. So children should get about 60 minutes a day, which is a different uh, recommendation than what uh, adults should have. Adults are recommended at least 150 minutes a week, which will break down to about 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes, five days a week. But children need a little bit more, especially if they are a little bit heavier. We don't want children going on diets. We want them to have exercise because children should not be restricted in calories, but they should have that activity. So we would encourage, yes, they're going to get some activity in gym class. They're going to get some when they run around at recess, but it's not going to equal to that 60. So when they come back home, encouraging maybe a family walk um, where then you can also, as the adult, get the exercise you need um, or just letting them play outside and be children. Right, exactly. I think that's that's the main thing, getting them off the screen and getting them some fresh air, right? Correct. And it's a beautiful time right now to be doing something like that. It is. It's a really great time because it's not too hot. You don't have to worry about making sure they're hydrated or anything. And it's also just not too cold where you have to dress them up. Right. And I think um, we talked about eating family meals, but family, you know, bike riding or whatever the case might be, that's real key too, isn't it? Exactly. Because then again, it's parents modeling that behavior that we want the children to, to then take into their future lives as well. Um, and it just helps with getting everybody the exercise they need. Are there some numbers when we, we talk about obesity, um, some numbers in terms of a higher rate of obesity at certain ages? Have you looked at that? There, it's kind of a span across ages um, for where that obesity lies. Um, a lot of the things that play into a role is their access to healthy foods and also income status that can help drive where we see a little bit higher rates in places that don't have local grocery stores and they're kind of just relying on those fast food chains and convenience stores to fuel their children. So Richland County is affected by this, aren't they? It would be because we do not have many options for a healthy grocery store. Um, we do at least have Walmart, which does support having good fruits and vegetables. Um, but people who live further away from town, yeah, it could, we could definitely be seeing some higher rates. 
Do you see higher rates, uh, Lindsay, with uh, insurance? That's another thing I thought about, too, with private insurance versus someone on Medicaid or something like that. Right. Coverage is going to vary based off of insurances and what an insurance company can cover as far as seeing a dietitian as far as getting their services or us working with them. Um, so that's a big impact too, as to parents or kids are finding this nutrition information either on social media or on the internet versus from a reliable source like a registered dietitian simply because they unfortunately either can't afford the out-of-pocket cost or in their insurance doesn't cover it. Um, and a, lot's, a lot of times it's important to get a head start and have preventative coverage, but that's pretty difficult with insurances too. Um, so at the Richland Hospital, we really try to reach out to the community too and provide services as a group or as community benefits to help kind of compensate what maybe families can't get through with insurance um, or even scheduling an appointment. Mm -hmm. um, a checkup, lots of time, a yearly checkup is free too, isn't it? Right, yes. Yeah. So that's really nice because that can kind of... Um, point out any red flags or help with any goals, um, both just healthy lifestyle and living, exercise, but also nutrition related labs or status too. Mm -hmm. um, certainly if, if we're going shopping, you know, one of the old things, Grace, is like, well, it's, it's cheaper to eat junk, you know, but I don't know if that's necessarily true, is it? It's not necessarily true. There are options to eat healthfully. Um, one of my projects in my internships was to create a meal and do price per uh, serving and actually figure out that it is kind of a false thing to say that it is. But it would be more like you're choosing the options that are either in season, meaning that they can price them cheaper because they did not travel as far. Um, or if you're buying canned and frozen options, those are normally cheaper than some of those fresh options, especially right now as Walmart is going to have to start shipping those fresh options from further away. Those prices might go up or the options will be limited. And so if you go to the canned or frozen section, you can still have those options that are going to be a little bit cheaper. And if you get the time where they're all two bucks for a pack of frozen, stock up your freezer. They don't go bad. Um, so just shopping the sales and being able to buy those canned and frozen options. They used to have bad reputations for the salt content. Ultimately, there's a lot more options out there that have the less salt or the no salt added in the canned options. And the frozen ones are going to be salt free unless they have sauces or additions in them. So look at the labels a little bit to see, you know, because some probably do have sugar and salt added too, don't they? Yeah, it should be a trigger if you see that they're like in a cheese sauce or in a sauce that there might be additional salt or additions to that. And then when you're looking at frozen fruit, looking to see again, too, if there's like a glaze on it, it might report that on the label um, because that would mean that they're going to add additional sugar. I mean, fruit already has sugar, so it's going to have it on the label, but just looking to see if there's any sauce or glaze on that sh uh, fruit. And that goes the same with any canned fruit. We would prefer the ones that are canned in 100% juice because that will help cut that sugar content, which again is things that we want to watch out for for children is that excess sugar, the added sugar. We're not trying to avoid sugar in children. What we're trying to avoid is having those added sugars that are going to come from additional um, ingredients added, such as having it canned in syrup, which is going to add more sugar, um, or when we give them those sugary beverages. Is there a sugar alternative that we should avoid, or are some better than others We know when you're reading labels? So the FDA has said that they're all uh, generally recognized as safe in moderation. So we wouldn't oh. want to have a whole lot of those artificial sweeteners and a lot of those sugar alcohols. So it'd be like anything that's like the OL at the end. When you look at the ingredients, sorbitol, mannitol, xylitol, those are all going to also possibly upset people's stomachs. Some people are a little bit more sensitive to the sugar alcohols and those you just would want to avoid because you won't feel good. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm not an expert, but, you know, you look at some of the things and you wonder uh, in, the, in the ingredients, uh, Lindsay, why do they put things like that in these uh, vegetables and fruits and things like that? 
a lot of times companies try to enhance the taste, enhance the flavor, keep the color nice and fresh looking. Um, sometimes it's to help with shelf stability and also for people to keep buying them again and again because sometimes these additives, like I said, can contribute to a better mouth feel or a better flavor. Um, and sometimes our bodies just crave that a little bit more too, depending on what the ingredient is. Um, so lots of times we suggest trying to find options with fewer ingredient lists. So you get a little bit more of your whole foods versus this lengthy list of a lot of words you cannot even pronounce, <laughs> um, or at least trying to do your research or ask about it as far as um, what are these products being added to the foods and why? It's always nice to know the why for that as well. Um, in an ingredient list, the food listed first is always going to be the most abundant in that food. So, and then all the way at the bottom of the ingredient list, that is the ingredient that's found least in there. So that can kind of help give you a sense of if you have... Um, high fructose corn syrup at the top of the list, you know that there's going to be a lot of that in there in that food product. I was just going to bring that up because there, there for a while, you know, that's that's all you heard was high fructose corn syrup and, and how bad it was, but it's in a lot of things, isn't it? Right, and a lot of times that's, again, for flavor and for um, the product looking good, um, for people wanting to continue to buy it because it does taste good. So trying to either not have that in your ingredient list, have more natural sugars in there, your honeys, your molasses, um, your canes, or having that as close to the bottom of the ingredient list as possible. MSGs too, isn't that another thing that uh, is talked about, MSG in foods? MSG, yes, and that's more on the sodium thing. So uh -huh. that is one that is debated a lot because some people say that it's really bad. Some people say that it's not. Um, it, as with any sodium content, we want to limit. Um, everything should just be taken in moderation and it should not be in excess amounts. Um, some people, again, are sensitive to MSG where they might have uh, kind of an intolerance um, where they might get headaches or get an upset stomach from it. And again, then those for sure should be avoiding that ingredient. Yeah. Sometimes uh, what we eat makes us sick. We don't even realize it, right? Yeah. So some of our favorites too. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And sometimes I hear a lot of lactose intolerance patients say, well, I really enjoy ice cream, but I know I'm going to be on the toilet. And so it's kind of that give and take, give and take. sacrifice yep. of what can you do to help find alternatives versus what are you willing to um, do knowing the consequences? Uh huh. My question is always, too, you know, it seems like we hear a lot more of those now, you know, like lactose intolerant or uh, celiac and things like that. Were those things always around or are they more prevalent now, Grace? They've always been around. We've just been better at diagnosing and being able to kind of track that. Um, I also kind of always just bring up in an area like this, our ancestors probably didn't go to the doctor a whole lot and they probably just ignored the fact that they may have felt really crummy when they ate foods um, because they were busy, they were on the farm, they were working all the time and they didn't have the time to go and have someone investigate if they have celiac disease whenever they eat wheat products. Um, but now we're, we're better at having access to health care and also diagnosing. But it probably made a difference because everything was homemade, Lindsay, you know, in terms of breads and everything, they, they made them in their own kitchen too, right? Yeah, a lot of times, um, like I said about those whole food ingredients, you know exactly what's going into your food. So if there is something that's a little bit triggering as far as symptoms or side effects, at least you can try to backdate a little bit and figure out what exactly made it might it be, maybe eliminate some ingredients, see if that helps. You know, it's kind of a trial and error process, especially when you are making your own food versus looking at that longer ingredient list and trying to figure out, is it the sugar alternative? Is it the sodium content, fat content, things like that. Fascinating stuff. We'll come back with more. In fact, there is a special a night for families coming up, a movie night. We'll talk about that when we return. Grace Denman and Lindsay Hatfield are in the studio with us today on The Morning Show.
Our friends in the studio from the Richland Hospital, Grace Denman and Lindsay Hatfield, registered dietitians. We're talking about Childhood Obesity Month and uh, all of the things that uh, go along with that. Grace, uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about some of the services that, that you offer. Yeah, so Lindsay and I are at the Richland Hospital. Lindsay mostly sees our inpatient di- uh, patients. And so whenever someone is admitted in the hospital, she will be seeing that patient and checking in. Um, And then Ty and I are in the outpatient department and we mostly focus on diabetes, but we can also see patients who have commercial insurance for other things such as um, heart conditions or if they are looking for weight management help or if you have chronic kidney disease and wanna see someone to kind of help with lessening the perils of having that um, but we're here at in the Richland Hospital doing those and we can always too if you're ever wondering what the coverage would be like is call us and ask about it we can always get our patient estimates team to run an estimate so that you would know what you're paying I see so you take that insurance and kind of run it and give an estimate before any work is done then so yeah so if you have commercial insurance it will be be able to tell you if you have coverage or not and then it's kind of if you have a copay or something you should just probably know that we don't give an estimate for that but if you don't have coverage for a dietitian specifically we will give you a quote so that you know what is going to be charged to you do you do some things in the community uh, some some different uh, public things then Lindsay? yeah like we mentioned earlier lots of times if those who can't get in to see a dietitian, who aren't admitted to the hospital to see a dietitian, or don't have that insurance coverage or out of co- uh, out of pocket coverage, um, then we really like to do some outreach things. Uh, one of the events coming up next month is Club Scrub, and us as dietitians are providing one of those kind of classes, and we'll be doing some fun activities, looking at different nutritional. Um, facts and knowledge and doing some experiments with food. So this is a program for 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth graders. It's open to freshmen now um, to really kind of dive deeper into not only the nutrition world, but maybe what a dietitian does and how they can help others too. So um, some fun activities I've got planned for that regarding both salt and sugar and some fun little competitive games and of course, always food um, involved in that. But other things we've done is gone to do some cooking classes at schools, looked at school fairs and participated in those. Um, We've done grocery tours in the past with multiple groups, whether it's um, school aged or just adult groups, certain disease condition groups or weight loss support groups. And also we're starting to branch out into the athletic community too and working with the surrounding high schools to really get them learning about nutrition, especially how it impacts their performance and their growth in that phase of life. Yeah, that's fascinating stuff too because I remember back in the day, you know, friends like, I'm not eating today because I've got a game or whatever and that's not good, is it? Right, there's a lot of strategies to work on um, eating and fueling for performance, for practice, for games, whether it's in the night time in the mornings on weekends Um, sometimes those nerves can kind of block our hunger cues but it's still just as important to make sure we get enough adequate energy at breakfast time making smart choices for school lunches or packing your own lunch so that way you have that energy um, to prepare for that game or meet match after school how can people sign up for the club scrub grace They can contact the Richland Hospital and they will connect them with Sarah, I believe, and she will be the one who then signs them up. And there's multiple date options, so you can always work with Sarah to see which one works best for you. Do you wish you would have had something like that when when you were growing up? Yeah, I do think that it would have been great to have something similar when I was growing up. I mean, when I was in... Uh, middle school, I thought I was going to be an architect. Um, It wasn't Uh until I started to take some nutrition classes in high school, just as some fun credits that I really thought about a job in healthcare and specifically in dietetics. Um, But to have this club scrub where they can get a taste of what healthcare professions can be like and kind of learn that we we need people in the healthcare professions. And if you're a person who likes to help 
that it would be good options and then they can kind of learn where they could go because like for me I knew I couldn't be a nurse or a doctor because a lot of blood is not my thing but dietetics is me my participation in the healthcare field without having to deal with a lot of blood <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's important Lindsay too uh, as Grace mentioned maybe you, you find out that it's not for you and uh, you're going to go on and maybe look for something else to do in life then Exactly. There's a lot of different areas, even within the healthcare field, even within a job within the healthcare field, different avenues. You can work in more of a critical care unit or a rural hospital like the Richland Hospital and um, veteran affairs facilities. So there's lots of different options to meet different types of patients or have different responsibilities. But yes, Finding out what you love to do is just as important as finding out what is not for you. So this is a good, at least, um, way to get your hands dirty, to get experimenting with things, to get to know others, to ask questions, to learn, to see kind of, okay, as we're now going throughout high school, what are some things we want to at least look for, whether it's in a college path or in a um, non-extra schooling path, and kind of go from there. Tis the season for families to be on the run, Grace. And, uh, you know, you're running from soccer practice to maybe a high school kid's got a volleyball match or whatever the case might be. What are some tips and things that uh, that we can do so we aren't always just going through drive through Right. So a big thing of that is planning ahead and making sure that you have food on hand that can be on the go. That might be grabbing uh, granola bars and some nuts and che- like cheese slices pre-slicing cheese if you just buy the brick to save money um and then finding just containers filling those up i mean the the trend right now is kind of the snack tackle boxes where um they're just getting a lot of little sections in a box and you can kind of fill that with different things like your nuts and your fruits you can have cut up apples in there because that's apple season and you can have some nuts in there some cheese for protein Um, But kind of thinking of how can you incorporate a bit of our carbohydrates, such as crackers or pretzels, how incorporating some protein in there, like your cheese, your nuts, or getting a protein bar, granola bar, um, and then also just some fun things like your fruits and, if we can, even your vegetables in there. Mm -hmm. Go to an orchard, too. It is the time of year, right? It is. And it's always fun to go to the orchard to be able to pick out the, the, your favorite apples. And also, I think everyone would agree, the apple cider donuts in moderation are great too. Um, but it would be even just a better way is finding one that you can just walk around, even just walking around the grounds of your apple orchard that you're going to shop for instead of just going there, getting your apples and running away. Um, there's always fun things to do at orchards. Either it's a petting zoo, it's taking pictures with the family around the orchard, or just even looking at the pretty fall colors as that approaches. Mm-hmm. Another one of my favorite seasons uh, going on right now, Lindsay, is crockpot season. Yeah, so Crock-Pot is a lovely tool to have in the house um, because there are so many different types of recipes out there, especially as temperatures get cooler and, you know, the cooking of food for eight hours in the day smells up the house real nice and gets you hungry. Uh, It's very um, handy for meal prepping as well, whether it's, you know, a crock pot can usually hold large portion sizes. So being able to refrigerate or freeze some of those leftovers after that dinner can really help for the upcoming busy days or weeks. Um, That way, if you are on the go, a lot of times you're coming home to still a fresh meal versus trying to eat out at a restaurant or grab something quick on the ride back. Um, so there's lots of different recipes, I'm throwing in some protein in there, some vegetables in there and letting it kind of simmer all throughout the day um, <clears throat> is a great way to make sure that you're getting enough protein and getting enough vitamins and minerals. So I'll put you on the spot. So you're going to a, a party there, you're going to watch the football game there. You're going to take something in a crock pot there for, do you have a healthy snack idea that you can pass along? Lots of times we like to make something with venison. We're a big hunting family as sure. is Grace. And so putting a venison roast in there with some quartered potatoes and then you've got carrots, onions, mushrooms, things like that to kind of help enhance it as well. Or even chicken is a great option too where you're adding um 
either just the chicken with a bunch of seasonings and some broth along with some vegetables. And there you can make rice on the side, potatoes on the side, a little bit of noodles on the side. So I don't think anyone's going to say no to someone bringing a crock pot to a family dinner or tailgate or anything like that. And there's a lot of ones that are portable now too. Mm -hmm. Well, the game's at noon. If you and your husband want to come over, you can bring that yeah, <laughs> on Sunday. you have any uh, ideas, Grace, in terms of crockpot recipes or anything? I think when I think of crockpot, I think of a lot of roast with a lot of vegetables. Um, they also have like the um, like casseroles that you can start making in the crockpot too, where you, if you just throw in all the ingredients and the at least start cooking the protein and then you can shred the chicken and then you can kind of get into like an enchilada thing in your uh, crock pot. But the big thing is whenever something asks for vegetables, throw in extra because that's going to help kind of build that healthy eating habit, have those vegetables, especially even it's soup season too, and throw in all those extra vegetables. And it can be just from those frozen packs that you just dump in there, but extra vegetables won't ruin a recipe. They'll only enhance it for everyone's health. That's great. You know, and that brings up a good point. Um, my favorite way to eat carrots is a whole bunch of carrots like in a, in a roast or you mentioned venison or something, put that all together and carrots taste really good in something like that, don't they? I'm not a cooked carrot fan. Oh, no. <laughs> I would always pick those out growing up, but there are different um, vegetables to add to it. Lots of times we do peppers, oh. you know, such as bell peppers, jalapenos. We like experimenting with banana peppers in there. So there are other vegetables I choose <laughs> around, but raw carrots I like. Um, yeah. It's just the cooked. Something about the texture. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's like with me and raisins, too. Yeah, I'm not right. a raisin fan. It's the texture, I think, and more than anything. And I think that's a common thing too with children is that children are sensitive to textures too. And so if they don't like a, f a vegetable or a fruit that you have served them, try cooking it in a different way and they'll change textures. Like Lindsay, she can eat raw carrots, but she won't eat the cooked ones. Um, there's, I'm sure, other people who say the opposite where they don't want the raw ones, but they want the cooked ones. And I know a lot of the cruciferous vegetables, the cauliflower, the broccoli, those ones, some people say they won't touch raw, but they'll eat them cooked. The other thing that I hear from patients a lot too is that they don't like vegetables because what they're associating is just a mushy pile on their plate. And so then I talk about how we don't have to over steam them and overcook them until they're a pile of mush. We can roast them. We can throw them in an air fryer. If we have air fryers, that's a common thing that people have been having in their kitchens lately. It's basically a tiny little oven, so you can be roasting all your uh, vegetables in there, and you can have quick, easy roasted vegetables. The other thing is that when we're cooking it, we're bringing out different flavors of the vegetable, and that's why it can be completely different. At raw version, it might not be as sweet. When we start to cook it, it's going to break down those fibers, and it's going to get a little bit sweeter. And then when you roast it and you get that kind of crispy on it it can get even a little bit sweeter mm -hmm. most definitely well you have a movie night coming up here you'd like to plug as well grace we do so the richland hospital has received a five-star patient rating from the centers of medical and medicaid services and this is a composite score that our patients gave us and so we're very proud of that um, so we are going to be celebrating by showing inside out two on saturday october 12th the gates will open at 5 30 and the mu movie will begin at dusk and all people are welcome. So come on down and watch Inside Out 2 with all of us. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of fun. And that'll be the first time to see the movie, right? You, you guys haven't seen that movie yet? I haven't seen number one, so I'm going to have some <laughs> catching up to do before October 12th yeah. comes. It's stream on that. Disney Plus. Yeah. yeah, stream that on Disney Plus and then get ready for the 12th movie night. That's a great family thing to do, isn't it? It is. And it's nice again to just get outside and bring the blankets and open up the trunk and all cuddle up and watch the movie or just bring your own bag chair to settle in and but you might want blankets in october 12th <laughs> awesome well you guys always bring some good news and it's and it's fun talking about food and things like that do, do when you're out in the community do people judge you you know it's like well there's Lindsay with the biggest ice cream cone i've ever seen you know do, do you get that or not <laughs> no no i think that well they, we make jokes back and forth, but it just goes to show that we're all human. We all have different goals, different um, health and lifestyles, 
And we always talk to our patients, you know, there is this huge quality of life component too. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know anyone's story behind what their grocery cart holds. So I think that, you know, showing by example is important for most of your day, week, life, things like that, but also showing that it is okay to really enjoy the food. It's there for enjoyment too, and also nourishment. Yeah, even if you don't like cooked carrots, you know, right, it's, exactly. it's all right. <laughs> Everything in moderation, that's the bottom line, right? Grace? That is, we're not looking for perfection. Nutrition is never about perfection. Our body is not all about, you have to get all the right nutrients every single day. It's that most of the time we want to be eating it to get those nutrients in a grand scheme of things. So we're not looking for perfection every day. And I always tell my patients 80-20. 80, 80, if 80% of the time we can try and eat right, have half of our plate of fruits and vegetables and have a good protein source, then the other 20 is for allowing us to live life. And with the holidays coming up, that's kind of something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Lots of holidays, lots of food. Thanksgiving and Christmas. Not, and Christmas, in fact, is now less than three months away. Isn't that's that scary. <laughs> that is scary. It blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in, you two. Thank you. It. Thanks good, for having us. Good to see you again. Indeed, Grace Denman and Lindsay Hatfield, registered dietitians with the Richland Hospital.